Hello, it's Scott Manley here. It's June 10th. It's time for Deep Space Updates. We've had four lunches in the last uh, week or so. Starting out on June 2nd, there was the Long March 2C. Now, this was carrying nine navigation satellites for a company called Geespace for their Geely Future Mobility Constellation. Uh, this is actually an automotive, like a car maker in China, who wants the, the you know, constellation of satellites that will work with their self-driving cars. Now, and it's interesting that Tesla doesn't want to do this, but someone in China does. June 3rd, the Progress MS-20, a cargo mission to the space station, launched. Uh, it was carrying, all, in addition to the usual stuff, supplies for the Russian segment of the International Space Station and scientific experiments. It had like, a couple of uh, CubeSats, which were built by Russian universities. And of course, given the current situation in Ukraine, they missed no opportunity to you know, try and score some propaganda points. They painted uh, you know, names of uh, contested regions in Ukraine on the side of their rocket, saying, we will not abandon these regions on the side of a rocket which was soon to be abandoned uh, because it's just, you know, not a reusable rocket. Yeah, um, yeah, June 5th. Long March 2F took off carrying Shenzhou 14. This is the latest mission to China's space station. The crew is Cheng Dong, uh, Liu Yang, and Kai uh, Susi. So this mission will be like a six month stay on the uh, you know, on their, their station. During this time, uh, we believe there's going to be expansion, you know, new modules added to expand the Chinese space station, and. More interestingly, it's planned that they will be there when the next crew arrives. There's going to be an overlap between the crews. Uh, the crews. Therefore, the Chinese space station is now intended to be permanently occupied. So now we've got the ISS permanently occupied, Chinese space station, you know, Tiangong permanently occupied. There's two, uh, two of these stations in in orbit on a continual basis. So. You know, that's that's cool. That's progress, even if you're not always a fan of what, you know, Chinese space program. Uh, and of course, June 8th, there was a Falcon 9 launch. This was their first geostationary launch of the year, carrying Nilesat 301 to a geostationary slot over, uh, over Egypt. It basically provides television service for uh, Egyptian TV services. Um, yeah, booster recovery and all is good. Also, we saw a new Shepard launch with NS-21. And I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, you know, it's not necessarily a big deal. It's mostly people paying for their tickets. But yeah, Evan Dick, who is a reflight, the second flight, Vis Victor Vescovo and Hamish Harding, who are sort of like, you know, they like to style themselves as explorers. They've set all sorts of records for flying around the world and going very deep underwater. I'm sure they would be Really cool people to hang out. Uh, Katja Esgareta, uh, she's a postgraduate at Johns Hopkins. And she's actually worked on like Mars 2020 and Europa Clipper. And the other one that stands out, yeah, I mean, everybody stands out in these crews, but Victor Correa Hispanha. Uh, okay, I, I don't know how to say this name, but he... He is a crypto nut. Yes, uh, he was selected by the Crypto Space Agency. He basically bought some NFC, NFT or whatever, and somehow was selected that uh, he should fly to space because uh, you know he he you know because they believe that crypto and space are very important. Uh, yeah, you know, sure. Anyway, uh, another launch that was expected to happen soon was. Um, SpaceX's CRS-25, the SpaceX Dragon launching to the space station with cargo. It has unfortunately been delayed. They found some fuel vapor, some of the monomethyl hydrazine had leaked into the wrong side of the valves and there's some concern that there may be a leak somewhere in the system. So they take took it off, uh, you know, and they're looking to see if there's a problem, see if they need to replace anything before it flies again. So yeah. Other news, uh, obviously the big news at NASA was the whole announcement of the new spacesuit supplier. Uh, I've got a whole video on that, but it's Axiom and Collins Aerospace. But of course, these are just the primary contractors. There's a bunch of smaller contractors underneath them. Most importantly, ILC Dover is paired up with Collins Aerospace and Dave Clark or David Clark 
is paired up with Axiom. These are two providers to, that have huge history of building spacesuits for the, the US space program. And yeah, I have a very detailed video on this and hopefully they can get the suit developed in time. I'm pretty sure they will. Um, so we haven't seen new, the first pictures from the James Webb Space Telescope. We now know that they are going to be revealed in the start around, I think 12th of July is what I remember. Could be wrong, but more interestingly, they, it's been revealed that there has been an impact on the mirror and it is going to, it's notably, noticeably affecting the quality. Now, I think by noticeably affecting the quality, it doesn't mean that it's all out of focus. It just means, oh, something changed and we think this was an impact event that somehow has damaged the mirror. It's bigger than they expect and hopefully this isn't a sign of things to come. Hopefully we don't suddenly find out that there's actually a lot of debris out at L2 and somehow none of the other missions there have noticed this. Oh yes, and the other interesting bit of news out in NASA is that they have, they have basically, they announced that they are gonna take, uh, do some investigating into unexplained aerial phenomena, or as other people like to call them, UFOs, except that they may not be flying. But yes, aerial phenomena. This is, this has been talked about recently again. And, uh, you know, the Department of Defense, they had their advanced aerospace threat identification program that's been running for a very long time. It was actually canceled, but never really stopped and is now running again. NASA is now contributing to this. I mean, it's a small amount of money. It's like $100,000 and some researchers because they, they think these are interesting things that are worth investigating. They're probably not aliens, right? And NASA is pretty sure that they're not aliens, but if they were, wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be something that would be world changing? I think, you know, we'll find there might be some new and interesting science that comes out of this. I don't honestly believe that we're going to find that there are aliens flying around and watching us, but you never know. Like, I don't know. And if, if they did get caught by that, then that would be kind of embarrassing, to be honest. Yeah, um, what else? So SLS has rolled back out of the vehicle assembly building after its refurbishment, after the first set of cancelled wet dress rehearsals. It's now getting hooked up and they're expected to begin a new set of dress rehearsals starting on the 18th. That means they will be reloading it with repellent and hopefully succeeding to 100% on June 20th. And uh, this came out roughly the same time as NASA's Office of Inspector General published a very uh, detailed report onto what kind of mess has been made about the mobile launch platform too. So currently SLS is SLS block one and it's sitting on a launch platform with a tower. SLS block one B is a sort of next step. It's gonna have a much bigger second stage. The current second stage on SLS is basically the Delta IV second stage. Why? Because it's what they had sitting around. It's currently operational. They want to put on a much bigger second stage that has four RL-10 engines instead of one. This is going to be called the uh, Exploration Upper Stage. And that will turn the, the uh, SLS into SLS Block 1B. Problem is the heights of the fuel tanks and everything are different Therefore, they need a new launch tower. Now, they're only going to build three of the Block 1A and then transition to the Block 1B, but NASA somehow, or is somebody decided, somebody that has money to throw around says, you know what, we really don't want to spend that much time between the Block 1A and the Block 1B. So we need to have two towers. So a contractor was signed up, Bechtel, and given a check and a cost plus contract and they've already burned through all the money that they were supposed to spend on it and they haven't even started building. Also the design they have is overweight for the crawler transporter therefore they need to continue redesigning it until they actually get something that can be moved around. This is a big deal that this is so far behind schedule uh, because you know they can't really evolve the SLS if they, they don't get this fixed out. Yeah it's really kind of embarrassing Currently, like Artemis 4 would be the first one to use it. And it's it's currently no earlier than November 2026, assuming they get off their butt and actually do something. It could well be a lot longer. This week, Strato Launch also took to the skies one more time with Rock. This is their sixth test flight of the world's 
uh, widest or largest wingspan aircraft. This was originally supposed to carry rockets and launch them onto, into space. Uh, that never panned out for all sorts of reasons. Now it's going to be a, an aircraft that launches hypersonic planes for experimental tests. So uh, yeah, they took off from Mojave and unfortunately they had to cut short their flight. They came back. We're not sure why, but uh, that's that's what we know happened. It, in the few, last uh, couple of months, it's also been uh, revealed that the Talon A is going to be powered by a rocket engine from Ursa Major. They are a small like rocket building company. They, they want to sell engines to other people. They build these high performance closed cycle engines. And uh, the engine that they're going to use on the Talon is called the Hadley. The bigger engine that they are working on right now is called the Ripley. So yeah, you can guess where they're pulling that mythos from. Over in the over in Russia, and well in Europe and Russia, there has been a bit of back and forth about the uh, the German X ray telescope on Irosita. Basically, because of sanctions, it was decided to shut this telescope down because it's a German telescope on a Russian satellite, and uh, frankly, I think that's scientific vandalism, and I'm not 100% down with it, but. There was a lot of suggestions in the last week or so that Russia was just, they'd had enough of this and they were going to try to reactivate the telescope on their own. Uh, this was obviously, again, a certain, uh, well, high up individual, let's say, in Roscosmos, who frequently talks what we would call Taurus excretia. Um, but anyway, yeah, it was made clear that if this telescope was turned on, it would be considered kidnapping by the German authorities. Yeah. Europe has given the go-ahead to begin construction of the Comet Interceptor mission. That is a mission which will is aiming to find a new fresh comet. The idea is that it will launch alongside another mission called Ariel, which will fly out to the L2 point, and then the Comet Interceptor will sit there for a few years waiting for exactly the right opportunity, and then when it finds it, it will fire its engine, swing past the Earth and kick itself off into whatever destination it uh, is aiming for. They want to find a long period comet that has never really been seen in the inner solar system. And the problem is, long period comets, you don't have previous observations to line up their position. Therefore, you need to have the spacecraft in space ready to go, otherwise you'll never see it because it'll never come back again. So that's been given the go ahead to uh, you know, work. Firefly Aerospace, uh, they now have their second booster, second rocket at Vandenberg. They're currently getting it ready for a flight, possibly as early as July. I'm hoping it works. I'm hoping they get all four engines working on it this time. Um, the, uh, there's another interesting thing. I talked about uh, Ariel and Comet Interceptor being on the same rocket. So Psyche, I mentioned last time that the Psyche mission has been delayed. Now, this actually has a knock-on effect for another mission called Janus. Janus is supposed to find, is supposed to launch two uh, space probes, and they're both supposed to fly by binary asteroids. And it was going to get a ride-along on the uh, Psyche launch on the Falcon Heavy, and then go its own way. But it relied on the launch window to get to this target. Now, Psyche is being delayed by about a month and a half, and that means that Janus' plans may not work. So it's known that at least one of the targets is no longer accessible. One of the targets might be accessible if it launches at the right time. So the people behind Janus at this point, they can't switch to another rocket. They don't have the time. They basically have to find new opportunities for these spacecraft to go to. There was another mission that was supposed to ride along with Psyche called Escapade, which I believe is a Mars atmosphere probe. And it has already been switched to another spacecraft. I think it's actually flying on a, on an electron. On it's going to get a dedicated launch with a photon, you know, high performance stage. So I'm not sure. Like, yeah, I think that's what's happening to that. You know, the idea I think is there was a bunch of low cost missions that were originally envisaged as rideshare missions, and none of them have ended up as rideshares <laughs> because their parent payloads have uh, gone and shifted the schedules around or no longer worked. Anyway, uh, I think one final thing about space probes is that North Korea, or North, sorry, South Korea, the Republic of Korea, 
have cancelled their planned spa inter interplanetary space mission that was going to visit Apophis. The reason being uh, that Osiris Rex has been has decided that that's where it's going. After it drops off its sample at Earth, it's going to swing back into deep space and set course for Apophis. So look, I think that is the main uh, the main gist of what's going on. As I'm sitting right now, Elon Musk has just posted a cool image from underneath a Starship Booster showing all of the engines, you know, 230 tons each. I think all these engines have already gone through testing, so they have a booster that is getting very close to launch. And maybe by the next time uh, I talk, we will actually have a better idea of whether they're allowed to launch or what they will have to do if they're going to get a finding of no significant impact. But... Between now and then, there's probably going to be a lot more science videos. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.